We got three packages that were hidden on the body of a, a gentleman. And he had it like under his armpits, like right, taped couple. together. I'm Yoon Kim. I explore the world of sex, drugs, and life on the edge. We are at the biggest border in the entire world, at the Port of San Isidro in California. You can see all of the cars just waiting to cross over into the U.S. from Mexico. Like, the line goes back further than the eye can see. And just imagine, if you have something illegal in your vehicle, the amount of tension and the stress while you wait, because you know that they search every car very carefully. Why do you do it? What is that like? To find out, I spoke to former drug smuggler Brian O.D. With this heated pin, I'm able to open the cellophane without breaking the seal. I slide the cigarettes out. I put the Coke, it fits in there like it was made to fit in a pack of cigarettes. 50 grams of Coke, pack of cigarettes, perfect fit. I resealed it and I called a cab to go to the airport. Do you know how many times you smuggled drugs across the border? Probably, you know, 50, 60 times maybe uh, across various borders, Canada, Jamaica. And that was in the 70s and 80s. What was it like when you crossed and you knew that you got away with it? How did you feel? Fucking amazing. <laughs> These officers are part of the AT force, the anti-terrorism force, and they do the pre-screening before any of these cars go into the secondary inspection unit. They're looking for that anomaly. They're looking for narcotic loads out here. Right. They're looking for human smuggling. We find narcotics in vehicles several times a day, every day. This is the secondary inspection area where cars that were stopped at the booth as they were passing between the border are selected and are inspected that's where we actually bring our vehicles and, and basically our officers then look for narcotics and things of that nature. Well, everyone has a potential, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and we look at everyone with a whole array of tools that we have from technology, from canine, from experienced officers, from little handheld devices that we have to determine density of a certain area. Yeah. It's like the old Sesame Street adage, what is not like the other? They go through a lot of risks going against all of the checks that you guys have. What is worth it to them? Why do they do it? There are individuals who are down and out. A kilo of methamphetamine mm -hmm. is $22,000. How many packages was it? So we got three packages that were hidden on the body. Is that common? Strapping narcotics to your body is a common method. We see that often here at San Isidro and at some of the other ports of entries. And these tests are pretty instant when it comes to meth. Whoa, it turned blue already. How much do you think it is? A little over six pounds. A little over six pounds. Yeah. Over the last several years, we used to see more marijuana, but that has been changing. We've been seeing a lot more hard narcotics, mm -hmm. your heroin, your methamphetamine, your cocaine. Have you ever crossed from Tijuana into San Diego? Well, I have indeed. The chief of police of Tijuana was my friend. And um, we used to sit at the bar in Tijuana and get totally lambasted and we'd snort coke all night. And when we'd run out of coke, he'd send one of his bodyguard cops. He'd go call them over and say, go back to the uh, station and get some coke. And they'd go back to the station and get into the locker and take out a bag of coke and bring it to us in the bar. You know, that's how it worked in Mexico. It took money. Do you think you'd be able to successfully bring drugs from Tijuana into San Diego today? If I wanted to, of course. It's a lot harder now, no? It is a lot harder, but you know what? It, it was, it's always been hard. And uh, where there is a will, there is a way. Last year, we seized over 100 tons worth of narcotics in one of the ports of entry that I'm responsible for. And this, right now, we're in the pedestrian building. This is where people can cross over on foot. Can you tell me about the people that actually smuggled the drugs? Who are they? It ranges from um, young adults to older adults, middle-aged adults, individuals traveling by themselves, individuals traveling with family units. When we talk 73 million passengers coming through here, that represents about 20% of all arriving travelers coming into the United States. There is a large number that are legitimate travelers and that very small number that are not. Just standing here makes you realize what a numbers game this all is. Five to 10 per day people 
hoping they get through without getting arrested. 10 to 20 more hoping they'll make it into the United States without getting detected. Did you go to prison? I did. I got a total of 14 years altogether. Do you regret your smuggling background? No. No, I didn't. Look, drugs aren't going anywhere. And so we have two ways of getting our hands on these drugs. One, criminal elements that distribute it, controlling entire neighborhoods, killing people, destroying families. The other way is medically savvy people distributing drugs to people who think they need it. And while doing so, have the opportunity to have a conversation with these people to help them get out of the holes they're in. So you're saying drug policy should be a health issue? Absolutely, 100%. You wanna check it out? It's all done. Oh, it's done already? Yeah. I can actually say I have a shining pussy. Yeah, <laughs> it's sparkling. Do you think there's such a thing as a perfect vagina?